there's the sun, and then there's the shade. Today we'll be taking a look at a ransomware from Russia with a particularly destructive mindset. The developers of this malware decided that having a ransomware on your computer isn't bad enough. So this one actually downloads additional malware even after your files are encrypted. The attack vector for this threat includes exploit kits, which you can get by visiting an infected website, or spam emails with attachments such as these. Once the ransomware is executed, it's going to encrypt all these file extensions and change your desktop background to this. And after that, instead of terminating, it is going to download a list of additional Trojans and malicious programs that might be useful to the attacker in a botnet scenario. It actually uses an AES 256-bit encryption, which is really strong, so you're pretty unfortunate if you get a new variant of this one. The file extension used is XTBL. We'll see what is used by the variant that I have on my virtual machine. As you can see, the ransomware is predominantly targeted towards people in Russia and some of its neighboring countries. Now let's try the sample for ourselves. I do have kill switch running in the background, so we'll see what this process does once it's in memory. Now it's time to cover the world in shadow. As you can see, this file is disguised as an Adobe PDF. But if you go into details, it actually gives itself away since there's no file description, no file version. But then again, a document isn't an executable. So that would be the first way of knowing that this is not legitimate. But some people would just click on any attachment they get via email thinking that it's a document. I mean, just imagine you get an attachment like this. You just click on it, right? At least a lot of people do. So that's how it primarily spreads. Now we're going to execute it. It's just 928 kilobytes, but what damage can it do? It is running in memory now. And as you can see, we are seeing some spikes of network usage. Created a child process. And we can see some steady network activity. This does take a few moments to activate. First of all, it's going to contact its command and control servers, and after that, it is going to get the stronger encryption from there and start deleting your files. If you don't have internet access, you are not saved in that scenario either. It is going to use a list of like 100 public encryption keys, and it's just going to start with that. The parent process killed itself a while ago, and now we just have this process running. I'm pretty sure it's um, doing stuff in the background. And after a few minutes, we should see the payload complete its task. As you can see, CPU usage has gone up, more spikes in network usage. So it seems the payload has taken over. Our desktop background has been changed. We have messages in both Russian and English. The English one says all the important files on your disks were encrypted. Details can be found in readme files and they don't take any chances with this. They create like a ton of readme files All of them with the same information in there as usual onion domains It creates a unique ID for each PC that it infects and advises you to use Tor browser to access the URL So pretty standard ransomware stuff now. Let's see what has happened to our files as you can see, everything's encrypted, changes the names of the files to random gibberish. So you can't even locate a particular important file and maybe try to restore the deleted copy using some recovery software. And this also makes it difficult for you to restore from backup because you don't even know which files were encrypted. I mean, just imagine if this were an actual regular computer, it'd be very difficult for you to remember which file was where and what has been affected and needs restoring. It's going to be a mess. The file extension seems to be random. Well, not really. Actually, it's Windows 10 for each of these. So that is quite interesting. 
we then get the file extension mentioned by Kaspersky. So I'm assuming this is another variant of Shade. But nonetheless, the damage is equivalent. Your files are lost. Even though this particular variant is not entirely new, several AV companies still don't have signatures for it. As you can see, we still have some gaps in signatures. Once again, ransomware can be very devastating without the right kind of protection. Most major vendors do have signatures, so you shouldn't have to worry too much, but keep in mind new variants keep coming out all the time. If you don't have a product that provides some kind of zero-day protection against ransomware, there is always that impending risk that you'll be hit by a particular sample, which may be totally unknown, and then there's no going back. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Consider supporting me on Patreon if you feel it was worth it. I will be updating the goals and rewards according to what you guys want to see and choosing my priorities accordingly. Thank you so much for being a part of TPSC. Remember to take regular backups and don't open attachments from unverified sources. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe. This is Leo, and as always, Stay informed, stay secure.